Did you know that three quarters of the world's surface is covered by water? In those places where there is very little water, few things can live. But where there is plenty of water, there are many living things. Without water, nothing on this earth could live. If we could really look inside a drop of water, what would it be like? We should see that it is really made up of millions upon millions of tiny particles which are moving about all the time. These are called molecules. We do not actually know what molecules look like. Let us suppose that they are like tiny balls. Then a few would look like this. Here is a beaker of water, millions upon millions of tiny invisible molecules. If we stir in some sugar, this seems to disappear. We say that it dissolves. Do you know what really happens to it? Sugar is also made of molecules, but of a different kind. Each grain of this sugar is made of millions of these tiny particles. When it is dropped into the water, the sugar separates into the individual molecules which move around among the water molecules. The white balls stand for sugar molecules. All the moving molecules bump into each other and push each other around. In time, they are spread evenly around the beaker. What do you think will happen when we add equal amounts of sugar to equal amounts of cold and hot water? Watch. You can see that the sugar dissolves faster in the hot water. But why should it do this? You will remember that these molecules are constantly moving. When we make them hot, however, they move even faster. When the sugar is added, the molecules move about faster in the hot water and become mixed up much quicker. You know why clothes dry on the clothesline? Where did the water go? It's out in the air now, invisible. Here you can see a cloud of tiny water droplets escaping from the spout of a kettle. Soon all this water will disappear into the air, just as water from these clothes escaped into the surrounding air. When water does this, it evaporates. It turns into a vapor or gas. There are many interesting things to learn about evaporation. Here, David is finding out how long it takes water to evaporate from these metal plates. It evaporates very slowly. But David remembers how heat made sugar dissolve quicker. It also makes water evaporate quicker. Why does it do this? Remember that heat makes molecules of water move faster. Because of this, they escape from the metal plate more quickly. What do you think the effect of a wind will be? David finds out with an electric fan and discovers once more that the water evaporates faster. The water on the square is protected from the wind by a screen. Why should a wind have this effect? Water evaporates because some of the moving molecules move fast enough to escape from the surface of the liquid. Some of these molecules, however, return to the water, and this slows down the evaporation. A wind blows the molecules of water vapor away before they have a chance to return. Now can you explain why wet clothes are hung out to dry in the sun and in the wind? Sun and wind make water evaporate. Where does all this water go? It must go up into the air, but we cannot see it. In the air must be invisible molecules of water vapor. And if this air becomes cold against this glass, 
perhaps it will turn back into water. This drawing explains what happens. As the molecules of water vapour come near the cold glass, they cool down and move more slowly. Many hit the glass and collect to form droplets of water. When the water vapour molecules turn back to water like this, they condense. By speeding up the action with the camera, we can actually see water condensing on the cold glass. Have you ever seen condensed water anywhere else? Fog is made up of tiny water droplets. They are formed on cold nights from water vapour evaporated into the air during the daytime. On the morning after, the sun usually evaporates these water droplets all over again. So far, we have seen liquid water turn into a vapour or gas. We have also seen water vapour turn into liquid. But liquid water can also turn into a third form. Once more, speeding up the action with a camera, we can watch water change from a liquid into a solid as it gets colder. Now let's find out what happens to water when it is heated steadily. The flask is filled with water up to this mark. When we light the burner, the water is heated and rises in the flask. When water is heated, it expands. The water in this flask has been heated for some time and is boiling. A balloon stretched over the neck of the flask expands. The water is changing into a gas called steam, similar to water vapour, but much hotter. Water expands a great deal when it changes into a gas. This small amount of water produces enough steam to burst this balloon. The force of expanding steam can do many useful things. Not many years ago, most of our railways used engines driven by steam. Can you think of any ways that steam power is used today? <laughs> 